Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Danny, this is Project Fern and today we've got another video on my 2008 ODS3 8P. In this video today it's going to be a super geeky one, hopefully not too boring. I'm going to be taking you through all the factory options, the option code should I say, on this exact ODS3 when the first owner bought it from Audi brand new and they spec'd it up. Um, I know all these because on the inside of the service book there is a sticker it lists all these, it lists the details of the car and stuff. So if you've still got the service book for your Audi, you'll be able to look on that first page and it'll tell you all these. These codes, there's a VAG option list that you can then search through. Tells you what each code means and goes into a little bit more detail. Or if you have the brochure and price list, which I do from 2008, you can look through that and find out exactly what the spec of the car was and also what it was spec'd with and what each optional extra cost as well because I think you'll be surprised how soon you can add six, seven thousand pound on top of the retail price of the car just by adding these options on. Like I just said, if you don't find this video too boring, I'm more than happy to do another one but go through all the standard spec on the S38P and also go through every single optional extra you could get with this car and also give you the code for it and also how much the, that actual optional extra cost. Um, some are quite pricey, some are quite cheap. Um, but it's just all still interesting and stuff like this I absolutely love and I hope you enjoy it too. Right people, I've got my big list because I've wrote down every single code that's on the option list for this specific car. And we're going to work our way through that sticker now that's in the service book. I've got mine here. So section one on this sticker is for the vehicle identification number. Section two is model, engine output, gearbox, month and year of manufacturer. Number three is engine and gearbox code. Section four is paint number, interior equipment number. Option five is option equipment number, which is where, what we're going to be focusing on the main today. And option, uh, section six is fuel consumption. Um, I think they're in, yeah, they're in litres per hundred kilometres then. So the first code on the list, which is blank on my sticker because the customer who bought this car brand new from the dealership has chosen to pick um, a colour that's not in the brochure. He's picked one that's still in the Audi range, which is an option available at £1,600. And he's gone for the colour code LY5T, which is Kingfisher Blue. There is an option above this as well where you don't have to pick a car within a colour within the Audi range. You can pick any colour you want from a colour palette. Um, that's far more expensive, that's called an exclusive colour, um, but I can go into that in depth um, in another video. But this car has got the option of any colour from the Audi range and he's picked Kingfisher Blue and like I just said it was £1,600. The next code is the interior code which is broken down into two sections. The first section is N7U which stands for Alcantara Pearl Leather Black. The next part of it is ZN which stands for the um, upholstery. So you've got upper door panels black, carpet black, dashboard upper and lower black black, and you've also got the headlining, which is silver. Um, the door panels are silver as well all around. It just adds a bit more light to the car, I think. I've no doubt it still looks bad, good if everything's black inside. But that ZNU cord, I know that, I think it's ZM. The only difference is, is that the headline and the pillars are also black. So the interior code for this car is N7UZN. So the Alcantara and Pearl Leather in this car, um, it was a no charge swap out. So you could pick this over the full leather that came on the car as standard. This person who's bought this car brand new has chose to swap it out. Still got the heated seats and everything like that. Just a nice look, a bit comfier. Um, I prefer these seats, not just saying that because I've got them in this car. Apparently it's a bit of a rare option. Not as rare as like the wing backs or the exclusive with the different coloured panels in and stuff like that. But still a nice little difference to the standard black leather you see in the car. So the next code is E0A, which means no special edition. Bit of a rubbish code, that one. Um, but that's just there. So if you get a car which is like a black edition, which they did in these, that code will be different. And it'll just highlight the fact that it's a black edition. So if you're buying one of these cars and they say it's a black edition and they've just put all the black edition bits on it, you need to be checking that code really and making sure that it's a genuine one and not one that's just had the bits put on off one. The next code is 7A2, which is the CD changer for six discs mounted in the glove box, cannot be combined with Symphony Radio, iPod or USB connection. So basically, that's just saying I've got a six disc changer in the glove box. 
Um, I don't think it doesn't even look like it's ever been used. Um, I've no doubt the first owner did use it, but that was a £320 option from Audi, that brand new, um, when he ordered this car. Um, it's nice having a factory fit changer where it goes in the right place and it's not just screwed under a seat or anything like that. Nice little option to have. Looks nice when you open the glove box as well. Next code is 4UF. This stands for Driver and Front Passenger Airbag with Front Passenger Airbag Deactivation. So this was the first code that I come to where I thought this isn't really an optional extra or anything special but what I think it is is when these orders go into the factory they start off with a with a blank A3 frame basically just a shell and all these options whether they're optional extras or not are what make an S3 different to maybe the sport version they do and stuff like that. I'm not saying that that doesn't have an airbag deactivation switch but like the base model might not. Um, so when these orders come through it basically adding all these little bits that are different to spec a car up maybe into a sport model or maybe into an S3 model. So that's what the, that code's for, the 4UF, and it's for driver and front passenger airbag with front passenger airbag deactivation. There's a little key next to the changer inside the glove box which allows you to turn that off. I think it's down to having baby seats on the, the, the front seat and stuff like that. I don't have kids, never have to worry about anything like that. The next code is 6XD, which is exterior mirrors, power adjustable, heated. So that's a standard feature on the Audis, maybe not, uh, or sorry, on the Audi S3s, maybe not on the lower models. Um, you can get power folders, which is a, an option, and they also like, there's three different types of mirrors on these cars as well. You've got the pre-facelift, the facelift, and you've also got a slimmer version, which I can go into in another video when I start going in more in depth into optional extras and differences between the, the different stages of the 8P S3, but that's what that code's for. The next code is 5SJ, which is for left exterior mirror convex. Um, it's convex, just gives you a little bit more view when you're looking in your mirror, stops you from um, missing your blind spots and stuff. It's always best to still check your blind spots though. The next code is 5RU, which is right exterior mirror convex large viewing field. Again, just to give you that little extra view into your blind spots, but you should always be looking over your um, shoulders and checking them anyway. We've all been there when you'd think there's nothing there and you pull out a little bit and you hear a bo um, someone beat their horn and you, you then look and you see there's a big whopping car there where your mirror is picking up actually nothing. So always be careful. Next code is 1KW, which stands for disc brakes in the rear, which is standard on an Audi S3. The next code is J1L, which stands for battery, 280 amps, 6 amp hours. The next code is 1ZK, which is disc brakes in front, which you'd expect on pretty much any car. The next code is 1AT, which is electronic stability control, ESC. Got a button there on your dash to turn it off if you want to be mental. The next code is 3FA, which without roof insert, standard roof. Basically, that's the code for a non-sunroof car. Um, it'll be different if you did get a sunroof fit. I did look at a few with sunroofs. I'm not particularly bothered about having a sunroof if it's got climate control. With past experience of older cars and stuff, having a sunroof is actually a hindrance. It's another seal to fail. It's another way for water to get in, to cause rust issues, uh, rot your roof out and stuff. I'm not saying that's the case with the Audi A3. Or S3, um, it's just going off past experience with like four all Ford Escorts and stuff like that, which were rock boxes anyway. But yeah, that's what that code is: 3FA without roof insert, standard roof. The next code is UB5, which is rear shock absorption for sports version. The next code after that is G12, which is shock absorption in front, which you'd expect hopefully. Next code is 5TG, which is Decorative aluminium inserts dulling. I've looked in the brochure for this code and it actually says matte brushed aluminium, which is the door surround um, trims, the inserts, they call them inlays in the brochure. Uh, the matte aluminium is standard on the Audi S3. You could pay to swap them out for different ones like wood and that, but I like the brushed aluminium. I think it looks nice. The next code is 7X0 which stands for without parking distance control. So I bought this car and it's got front and rear sensors. It's got a button underneath the um, headlight and light switch on the right hand side there. I wasn't aware when I bought the car that they weren't standard, which I was a bit gutted about. 
but they work perfectly. The switch is to turn the front ones on. I didn't realise that if you had standard, if you had the parking sensors fitted by um, Audi from the factory, there would be a button on the dash where I've, where I've actually got a little compartment that pops out. And that button on the dash, when you press it, it then kicks in on the Audi navigation system and shows you the car with all the um, distances around it where they start bleeping, they go red and then turn green and stuff like that. Uh, so this car has got front and rear sensors. They've done a really good job fitting them. They work perfectly, but they're not standard, which is a bit of a shame because it would have been nice for it to come up on the display when you're reversing. But these are just acoustic ones where you can hear them. So the next code is 4R4 which stands for power windows with comfort operation and circuit breaker so i think what the comfort operation is is the one to one touch operation as we'd know it where you press it down and it press it once it goes down all the way press it up it goes up all the way circuit breaker i don't know if that's an anti-pinch mode where if you put your hand in it will drop back down um, or if when they're frozen it won't allow you to blow the fuse not sure but that's what that code stands for the next code is a rubbish one, it's F0A and it just says no special purpose vehicle standard equipment. So don't know what that one means. Next code is 8GU which stands for alternator 140 amps. The next code is 0YC which is weight range 3 installation control only, no requirement forecast. That's for the suspension. Next code is L26, which is suspension range 26, installation control only, no requirements forecast. That's for the suspension as well. I'm not that sure what, whether that sets ride high, whether it's different shockers, different springs. Not too sure on that. If you know the, 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 what that stands for, please let me know in the comment section below. It'll be interesting to find out. The next code is TA2, which stands for four cylinder SL engine. It might be an I that, two litre. 2 litre L unit 06F.D. I think that stands for the block. The next code is 3NZ, which stands for unsplit rear seat bench unsplit split folding backrest. So that's basically saying that the lower section of the back seats is one piece and then the backs do fold. I think the 60 40 in these, you can get the option where you can have the ski hole that pushes them through, which always makes me laugh because I don't think I've ever seen anyone use one, but you wouldn't, would you, unless you're in the car. The next code is 8BP, which stands for bifunctional headlamp with gas discharge lamp. That's the Zenons. Zenons? That sound, that's that sound right? Yeah, that's the Zenon headlamps, which come standard on an S3. The next code is U1B, which is instrument cluster with miles per hour speedometer, clock, tachometer, and trip odometer. Basically just saying it's a miles per hour clock. It's a different code for the kilometers per hour. Um, obviously, that's what you expect in a UK car. I don't know how people go on importing these with the kilometers per hour. I don't know if they just change the actual dials out or they convert them. Not sure on that one. Um, when I had my, imported my Evo, I just left it in kilometers and I had a GPS speedo in it because i wanted to keep it as standard and original as possible the next code is x2b which stands for equipment options subset for great britain the code after that is 1n3 which stands for speed related variable speed assist which is a servotronic um it i think that basically just means the faster you go and stuff like that, it tightens the steering up and makes it a lot more easier to park and stuff at lower speeds the next option is LPF, which is a lever-wrapped multifunctional sports steering wheel. These became a standard option on the um, facelifted cars. They were an optional extra on the pre-facelifted cars. I think they put a flat-bottom steering wheel in these cars because like, if, if I had a standard steering wheel in this car, I'd be knocking my knees on the bottom of it no matter how I sit. Um, six foot tall. I dread to think if anyone's taller than that's driving these cars. Um, you have to literally put your knees at the side of the steering wheel. Uh, it's still comfortable, that's how I drive anyway, but I think that flat bottom steering wheel is to actually give your knees a little bit more space um, to move between pedals and stuff because it is tight under the... The next code is 8Q3, which is automatic headlight range adjustment, dynamic self-adjusting while driving. Um, these Xenons are self-adjusting, that's what that basically says. Um, if you're going uphill or if you've got weight in the back, I think it will always level itself out. There's no dial or 
a little roller wheel inside the car to adjust the headlights like you can do in normal cars if you've got a lot of weight or you're towing a caravan i think you adjust it up and it will lower the beam so it's not dazzling people as you drive past the next code is 9q2 which is multifunctional display on board computer with check control that's basically the little um I think they call it a DIS, driver information system on the Audis. It's the computer that's in the middle between the rev counter and the speedo. Um, it just gives you all the options like miles per hour, um, miles per gallon you're doing, how many miles you've got until you have to go to a petrol station, average journey time, loads of stuff on it really. Um, I think a lot of people who own an S3 usually have it set to how many miles you've got to go until you go to a fuel station. Uh, There's no point putting it on miles per gallon. Although when I drove this back from Cornwall, I was getting about 35 miles to the gallon, which I think is brilliant for an S3. This next code really made me laugh. It's 8Z5 and it's not hot country. And they couldn't get the UK any more bang on. Um, I think in different climates, I don't know what they have to change for cars. I don't know whether they have to put different oils in them, different coolants in them. I've not a clue why they have upgraded fans in them. Um, but there is like not hot country, medium country, hot country. So there was quite a few different options when I looked up that code. Um, but for us in the UK, we are not a hot country and that's what that code's for. The next code on the list is D3Q, which stands for four cylinder SL or SI engine, two litre, 195 kilowatt, 16 valve turbo, FSI. Hot, <laughs> I struggle saying this, homogeneous homogeneous genus i can't pronounce it base engine is ta2 tt6 a lot of the engine geeks will know exactly what that means out there i don't and i just believe it just means it's this s3 engine so the next one is sq2 which stands for navigation system with color screen so this is a separate code to the one that's actually in for the audi navigation plus system which this car's got which i'll go into more detail in when we get to that code in a bit but that's what that's saying so i don't know whether it just sets up the um, wiring behind for the navigation system to go in but that's what that code's for the next code is chc and that stands for alloy wheels 7.5 j by 18 so that's the split wheels on this car um i've not got the brochure with me which is a shame to tell you exactly what they were called it's got a nice name but they did some quite nice wheels for this car as optional extras um they did a set that i've never seen as well um if i go if i actually do that video on this car with all the optional extras and you'll get to see the, the 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 top spec optional extra wheels they did and like i say i've never seen them and they look absolutely stunning the next option code is 7k0 which is without direct tire pressure monitoring system i check my tire pressures all the time i don't need a system to tell me that and i don't need expensive valves going wrong either and um, so i'm quite glad this car's not got it i wouldn't mind having it um but i know quite a few family members are quite annoyed sometimes when these valves go faulty and they have to go and have them fixed and they're not cheap the next code is 4x3 which stands for side airbag in front uh, with curtain airbags again standard option um, there is an option for this um, the sport bags, I think, where you can have the um, rear seats uh, bagged up as well. The next code is 3L3, which stands for manual height adjustment for the front seats. Um, yeah, it's just got a pump handle on the right hand side and on the left hand side of the passenger seat. Yeah, definitely got one. Um, that just allows you to pump up or pump down. Most of these cars, like I say, with the problem with the steering wheel, are set to the lowest setting unless you. Um, quite a bit smaller you can pump the seat up the next one on the option list is vw1 which stands for privacy glass dark tinted b pillar backwards which this car has got from the factory that was a 325 pound option the next code is 3y6 which stands for sunshade for rear window i think this is a standard option on the car there's a sunshade that pops up off the parcel shelf in the back and i believe just stops the sun coming in don't really need that with tinted windows but it's there anyway the next code is 4k2 which stands for radio remote controlled central locking 5d1 is the next code which stands for the carrier frequency the next code is 1sa which stands for without additional front underbody guard so you could get like an underbody protection guard on these cars um, if you go in looking at one and it's got one of them on 
Um, it's a little bit harder to look for oil leaks and stuff like that, coolant leaks. Um, I'd probably jack it up and take it off and have a look under there, see if there are any like um, soil into the inside of the cover. They are good to have on. Again, it's just another protection from the elements to the engine. You can buy them. You can buy the fitting kits as well. You can still get them from Audi. I've not looked at how much they are. Um, it wouldn't be some. It would be something that I'd be interested in putting on this car actually. Um, just keeping the engine bay clean, dry, and protected from the elements. But it's just saying that code there is saying that this car isn't coming with one. This is a good option, UG0. Um, this car comes without hill start assist, hill descent control, and comfort driving assist. Don't know what the second two are. Um, I think I don't know whether it's for elect, um, the automatic gearboxes. I don't know whether you could get it on the um, on the manuals. Um, I didn't. I didn't. I don't remember actually seeing it in the in the optional extra book either. Um, I'll have a look at that one when I get home. Next code is 7MB, which stands for Emissions Standard EU4+. So the next code is QG1, which stands for Service Interval Prolongation. So when I looked in the service book, I can see you can have long life servicing and stuff. I don't know what it actually means. Um, I've not investigated that one either, but it looks like this car's got that option. I don't know if it's down to the oil that they put in it. The next code is 4GQ, which stands for windshield in heat insulated glass. So that's basically every single code that's on that sticker on the inside of the book. But then this car's got things on that seem to be spec'd that's not on that sticker. Um, I'm going to go through them now. And I, I don't think that these are ones that the, the manufacturer... Um, sorry, the dealership would have fitted. I think they would have definitely had to have come from factory. And they're not really things that you could retrofit either. Um, so let me know what your sticker says and stuff or if you know for more information than me or was there like a separate sheet that was sent through with actual brochure optional extras at a cost it's just strange because i've just been through quite a few of those that are optional extras that are on it so you think they'd all be on it um maybe they couldn't fit them all on i don't know but i'll go through them now and tell you exactly what they are and how much they cost so the first one is called pnd which stands for the satellite navigation system plus I won't go into the full details of what this system's got over the normal ones, but it has got like the two USB, sorry, the two SD card slots. Um, I think it's got a bit of a better screen on it. Um, that was a uh, £1,650 option, that. Um, that came with the car. I've got the actual manual for it in the owner's manual wallet and stuff like that. Very expensive option. Um, I don't actually have the disc for it as well, which is a shame, but I've seen you can get them on eBay. I think the latest update they did before they stopped them was 2021. I'm going to buy that disc. I think it's about £20, £25 and just see what the Audi navigation system's like. Um, I've had the navigation systems in Citroëns in the past and to be honest with you, they've been pretty rubbish. I've always ended up hooking my phone up and using Google Maps. So the next code is 8RY, which stands for the Super Duper Boss Surround Sound System. And I've got to admit... I've heard people talk about these a lot. I've heard people bang on about them and, oh, you need to get one with the Bose sound system. And after having one in the car and listening to the radio and other things, the sound system in this car is absolutely unreal. Definitely, definitely the best sound system I've ever had in a car. Um, I'm not talking about chavy ones you used to put in when you were younger. I'm talking about clarity, sound quality. Even off the radio, the sound system in this car is brilliant absolutely brilliant and i love it that was a 440 pound option from audi so the next code is 9zu which stands for mobile preparation telephone preparation sorry law there's two options you can get for the mobile phone preparation this is option two and i've got the phone holder in the armrest here um it was for like a sony ericsson phone by the look of it inside the brochure which are long gone now um, but the good thing about it is it's still got the bluetooth enabled so i can use my phone not for playing music or anything like that but i can use it happily for um making phone calls and stuff i've not managed to get it to take my call, uh, my contact list in yet but if someone rings me i'm not bothered about ringing other people when i'm driving but if someone rings me it comes up with the name on the um controller in, in the middle here and i can just answer it by pressing one of the buttons on the navigation system which is brilliant it's all i need it for it works perfect and stops me getting points on my license 
So as I touched on before, if this car had factory fit, parking sensors, the cord is 7X2, and it's acoustic parking system plus front and rear. It doesn't say anything though. With it saying acoustic, I don't know whether it would have come through the stereo or not. It's just I've seen that people do cord them in. I've got like a button on the right hand side. So if you've got front and rear parking sensors on your car, will you let me know what, what buttons you've got, what activate it and what they sound like and whether they come up on the, the navigation system and show you the upper view of the car with all the, the ranges and the beeps going off on, on the actual display. Um, I do think that this is an aftermarket set that are on this car because like I say, it's not got the button underneath the radio here where you can activate the, the, the parking sensors when you're parking up. But that option for parking sensors front and rear from the factory is £525, which I think is a bargain. The next cord on my list is 8T2, which is cruise control, which this car's got. That's a £215 option. Um, I used that heavily on the way back from Cornwall when I was doing the 350 miles. Um, it worked an absolute treat. It's so manageable and controllable when you're driving. It's actually a joy to have that on the car, and I'm happy I've got it. So the next one's a bit of a weird one, it's QE1, and that's storage pack, nets on back of seat, storage under driver's seat, map compartment and glove box, and bag hooks in the boot. That was a £90 option. This car has every one of them options, apart from the nets on the back of the seat. Um, I'm just feeling again behind, I cannot find, no, definitely not got them. Um, I don't know if, because he switched it out to Alcantara, maybe that he's... Um, Maybe that gets taken away, the nets on the back of the seats. Not sure, but there are no nets on the back of the seats here. Um, I don't know if it means in the boot, um, but there ain't nets either in there. There's a net underneath the parcel shelf, um, but I think that's standard on all the Audis. But again, that, yeah, that was a £90 option. So basically, as you can tell there, there's quite a lot of money being spent on this car in terms of specking it up a little bit. The car, brand new retail, was £27,220 in the June 2008 price list. Um, in the thumbnail of this, this video, it'll probably tell you what the total cost of this car was going off them, not including the parking sensors, sorry, going off the, the option prices. There's so many nice little options you could have got for these cars. I think some of them you can retrofit. Like I say, if you've made it this far, you deserve a medal. It's been quite a long video, this, as I go through all these options. But I just find stuff like this interesting. I hope you do too. But, yeah, I'm more than happy to do another video and go through the brochure. All the optional extras, all the wheels, all the inlays. I can go as geeky as you want with these videos if you're enjoying them. But thanks for sticking around if you made it this far. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like the spec that this car comes with. Um, and just a bit more info on the car. Um Please hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. If you are subscribed, thank you for coming back and supporting the channel. Any comments, put them in the comment section below. What optional extras has your Audi S3 8P got? Um, as always, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, all the usual nonsense. And thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.